So it's a real pleasure to be here. Um, I was thinking a bit about when was the first time I had ever come across, I suppose, some sense of the idea of black film. And, you know, I was born in Los Angeles, so my earliest memory is going to Grauman's Chinese Theater for the premiere of Mahogany, which would have been in October of 1975. Um, Honestly, my only real memory of that night, <laughs> since I was five, was uh, the car crash, um, the gathering in Chicago at the end, and uh, Billy D. Williams' bow tie that he wore that night, which in retrospect seemed like a mutated butterfly was attacking his throat. Um, but as the way with any discussion of cinema or film, you end up thinking about dreams and nightmares. So I'd like to talk a little bit about James Baldwin's The Devil Finds Work. Uh, and I'll begin with a quote from that book. Quote, to encounter oneself is to encounter the other, and this is love. If I know that my soul trembles, I know that yours does too. And if I can respect this, both of us can live. Neither of us truly can live without the other, a statement which would not sound so banal if one were not endlessly compelled to repeat it and further believe it and act on that belief." End quote. James Baldwin's work as an essayist, novelist, and playwright, coupled with his activism as a public intellectual and witness of the 20th century of 20th century America, has continued to inform our understanding of America as indeed an unfinished project riddled with horrors, generative possibilities, abject cowardice, and love. While always attentive to measuring the history of American life, Baldwin's writing was particularly focused on black life and questions of class, desire, whiteness, anti-blackness, and the idea of democracy. Throughout his writing, he offered stunning displays of craft and critical commentary, but by the end of the 1960s, with many of his heroes and comrades gone, Baldwin's status as sage expatriate legend was thought to have diminished. Yet, in a letter from early in 1974, not long before the publication of his novel, If Bill Street Could Talk, Baldwin discounted speculation that his long literary silence was a sign that he was too old or passe. In this letter, he, pro he proclaimed, this devil could still find work. Uh, in the devil, uh, the, uh, devil, the devil Finds Work is a book-length essay that centers on, on his ideas around black spectatorship with a prosaic accounting of a history of his own film spectatorship. Importantly, Baldwin dwells on the idea of identity. As he writes in the, in the book, quote, identity would seem to be the garment with which one covers the nakedness of the self, in which case, it is best that the garment be loose, a little like the robes of the desert, through which robes one's nakedness can always be felt and sometimes discerned. This trust in one's nakedness is all that gives one the power to change one's robes." End quote. The looseness and nakedness he speaks of suggests a kind of criticism that recognizes identity as a process, something ceaseless, and not necessarily a real category or even an easily checked box. We live in the glorious time of the hot take, a time where most often than not, nothing is ambiguous and even ambivalent. What's good and what's wrong seems to always be at the head. Where everyone has an opinion about what black folks need to do and what black folks need to believe. Yet every, as though everything has to mean something uh, instantly. As though people need to label it away as quickly as they possible for fear that we might have to sit with it a little longer than would make us comfortable. So many opinions, so many opinions, yet no one ever seems tall enough to convince me that they can be a spokesman for the whole race. Anyway, I might have seen a unicorn down on Pico the other day, but I damn sure have never seen a universal black subject. In another Baldwin piece, uh, Autobiographical Notes, 
he suggests something of what is truly his desire for cinema. As he writes, about my interests, I don't know if I have any, unless the morbid desire to own a 16 millimeter camera and make experimental films can be so classified. His comment and tones and accumulated knowledge about cinema as something morbid or grim, if not melancholic. But what I find really interesting is how fundamentally Baldwin is kind of ambivalent about film. He plots in, throughout The Devil Finds work a kind of testimony of his love of cinema, but he reformats this love and amends it by a concentration on the politics of race. Baldwin's recollection of film is very much met with his love of theater, something which, of course, he holds in higher regard than film. Uh, in particular, there are these early experiences of a schoolhouse of one of his early school teachers, uh, Orilla Bill Miller, who he always called Bill Miller, uh, a young white school teacher, a beautiful woman, very important to me, as he notes who took a young Baldwin to film's greetings and theater performances. And if you ever have a chance to read the book, there's an incredible account of Baldwin going to, as a child, to Orson Welles' all black, uh, all black cast production of, um, of Macbeth that was particularly moving. But seeing this, but particularly in terms of thinking about his exposure to theater, uh, it triggered for him what became a serious preoccupation throughout his life, a devotion to understanding the critical consequence generated by the distance between black life and the rendering of black life on the screen. This particularly informed his sense of the function of black stereotypes. As he wrote, it's not entirely true that no one from the world I knew had yet made an appearance on the American screen. There were, for example, Stepan Fetchett and Willie Best and Mantan Moreland, all of whom, rightly or wrongly, I loathed. It seemed to me that they lied about the world I knew and debased it, and certainly I did not know anybody like them, as far as I could tell, for it is also possible that their comic bug-eyed terror contained the truth concerning a terror by which I hoped never to be engulfed. Baldwin's noting of the debasement and deception of black stereotypicality centers on less the question of injurious representation and more on for whom and for what purposes these images serve. He pivots through and away from the comic bug-eyed terror to a question of their utility in the service of terror or anti-black whiteness. And in this way, you can draw a very generative line from Ralph Ellison to James Baldwin to Toni Morrison in her book, playing in the dark. Fundamentally, Baldwin's point about the flesh and blood of theater marks the limits of his thoughts on cinema. He does not quibble in the un unproductive and fantastical terms of cinema's capacity to embody a truth. Instead, his dispute with cinema bears out his demand for a more generative sense of what does it mean to be a spectator as a distinction between the pleasure of watching film and film spectatorship as time to think about the games that people play about authenticity and truth. Baldwin does not, the, Baldwin and um, in a pretty powerful moment within The Devil Finds work, concentrates on the social problem film, uh, particularly Norman Jewison's 1967 film, In the Heat of the Night. And in this way, it echoes the way that Baldwin in general had been so um, divested from the idea of the social protest novel. As he writes, quote, the film helplessly conveys without confronting the anguish of people trapped in a legend. They cannot live within this legend, neither can they step out of it, end quote. The social problem tendency of American films entails an address of racial intolerance to the presumed logics of white liberal equity, Yet the problem of race is always addressed in colorblind humanist terms. We always bleed the same blood. We're fundamentally the same, yet always different. Shedding tears while you watch the movie Till is so very, very precious. But recognizing your complicity, that's the real work. Baldwin's insistence on the ideological textures of cinema is strikingly evident in the book's concluding comments on The Exorcist a film steeped in the satanic, yet Baldwin refuses to believe that, it, there is an American that an American audience would be untutored in matters of evil. 
<coughs> excuse me, as he writes, quote, the Americans should certainly know more about evil than that if they pretend otherwise they are lying. And any black man, and not only blacks, many, many others, including white children, can call them on this lie. He who has been treated as the devil recognizes the devil when they meet, end quote. It is this wickedness that he registers that is a manifestly everyday ubiquitous one, very much of this mortal plane, very much of this country. So in conclusion, I want to offer a little clip and a little, a little more prattle to get you to think about these things. I'm a black film scholar. At my most basic level, a lot of the work I do centers what I believe is, an, is film blackness, which is a meeting of the art of film and the art of blackness. I'm not a sociologist. I dwell on the complications of art and culture while also trying to make sure that I'm doing work that goes beyond whether can film can embody us, be positive, be negative, tie a bow tie, have a solid 401k, be a good husband, wife, father, mother, and make a good omelet. I'm still more interested about black life in the streets than on a movie screen. But most days, I devise and speculate. It is the idea of black film that will always push me to think more, to think deeper. I mean, wouldn't you want to hear what Baldwin thought of Spike Lee's She's Gotta Have It? Wouldn't you want to hear that encounter? I don't know. Let's say it's December 10th, 1986, and James Baldwin is at the National Press Club in Washington, D.C., giving a talk entitled, The World I Never Made. Baldwin, the questioner wants to know if you've seen the movie, She's Gotta Have It. If not, I'll tell you about it after the luncheon. <laughs> but however, they're not interested in my opinion. They want to know what you think about the movie. Have you seen it? I haven't seen it. Okay. Well, sorry. Okay. <laughs> this is the only recorded record of Baldwin almost speaking about Spike Lee. <laughs> okay. But as a black film scholar, Baldwin's work and the subsequent tools that we fashion from his words will always make these encounters possible. The Devil Finds work remains a vital text because Baldwin's scripting across the personal and the analytic comes to stir and query the relationship between blackness and cinema. Baldwin models how pleasure, history, and culture impact the way that we identify ourselves as film spectators, as well as how we identify ourselves as citizens of this nation. Film is not truth, and his ideas will continue to inform the ever new emergent ways that we understand this culture and this history as we push forward, uh, onward, devils, all of us together. Thank you. <laughs>